Hello, yes, Evan, and welcome back to a brand new video and a brand new topic for you, and that is the periodic table. So, before we get started, what you need today is you're going to need a pen, a piece of paper, your book. If you print it off a slop, that's fantastic and new knowledge. If you haven't printed off, do not worry. You can just work from PowerPoint like we have been doing recently. It's up to you. And if you've got your SRB, you will need your periodic tables. So if you've got your SRB, grab it in front of you. If you have not, I will give you a slide which you can use later in the video. So let's start with some retrieval first of all. So your first slide is on forces. Pause the video. What can you remember? So how'd you get on? Check your answers. Remember, you can pause the video to revise if you need to. Slide number two. Pause the video. Off you go. Diffusion. So again, check your answers. Pause, revise if you need to. And the final slide today is acceleration. So pause the video. What can you remember? How do you get on then? Check your answers and revise if you need to. So today we're going to be really work, starting to look at what this table means here. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you've got your period tables and SRBs in front of you, awesome. If you do not, then please, 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 please print this off, okay, or have this ready to go later. You'll need this table later, but you need to know all about this table by the end of this topic. So we're going to start by looking at... We're going to start, sorry, start by looking at this piece of information here. So you'll need to get this in front of you. If you haven't got it in front of you, just write with me. That's absolutely fine on the piece of paper. But we're going to work with some key questions to start you off. So let's start by looking at what do I mean by an atom? Now, this is something you've done before, but to remind you, it is the smallest part of an element that can exist. Now in GCSE, element, the atom is the smallest part of an element that can exist, it's what you need to be able to understand. Now I've asked here, draw a label an atom. Now what I would normally do is get you to give us a go in class, but I'm going to give you the answer now. Now an atom is made of three things. First of all, we've got in the middle, okay, what we call protons. Now these are in the middle. So I've drawn a little crop positive there. Okay, so we can say, I'm gonna do a little key over here. These are the protons. Next to the protons, we've also got what we call neutrons. Now I'm going to draw these with an N like this. So these are called your neutrons. So in the middle of your atom you have got a collection of protons and neutrons. This actually got a special name. This is called, I'm going to write it here, this is called the nucleus. So every atom has a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. Now, the final part is what we call the negative electrons. And electrons you find actually around the outside and they are in shells. So around the outside, you have electrons like that. So whenever you draw an atom, you've got the middle called a nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons and you have shells of electrons. Now we'll look at how the shells work more next lesson, but that's what you need to know. So nucleus contains protons and neutrons, and electrons are in shells. Now, because we know they have got, we know they're in the atom, we also need to know their charge and mass. Now protons are a positive one charge. And the way I remember it is positive protons, protons positive. Neutrons are boring. They have no charge. They are zero charge. And electrons, as I mentioned earlier, they are actually a negative one charge. 
So protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, electrons are negative. So in terms of the mass, now this time we're going to work our way up. So electrons actually are literally have no mass, but we're going to put here they actually weigh one over two thousand. They are so so small, so light. Their mass is literally zero. Neutrons have a mass of one. Protons have a mass of one. So therefore, they make up the majority of the mass of an atom, the protons and neutrons. So the final bit of new knowledge I'm going to give you before we have a little bit of a time for you to re reflect and learn this is why do atoms have no overall charge? That is because every atom has an equal number of protons and electrons. What that means is they've got the same number of protons and electrons, the same number of positives and the same number of negatives. So they actually balance out completely. Okay, so you've got four new bits of knowledge there, okay, to start this lesson. So what I want you to do is pause the video now, have a moment, just make, just cover them over, self-test, embed them, ready to do some knowledge to more in a second. So a couple minutes, off you go. Okay, so let's keep going then. So we're going to do one more little bit of new knowledge today, and they're going to practice this. So this last, this next question is a blank space. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to use a periodic table. And the periodic table, you will see has lots of letters. So for example, I'm going to draw, I'm going to look at carbon. Now if we look at carbon, carbon, has the symbol C. Now, next to carbon, there are two numbers. You've got six and you've got 12. So whenever you see an atom in a periodic table, you will have the symbol and two numbers. Now, these two numbers are really important because they tell a story. So let's start with a bottom number. And a bottom number is what we call the atomic number. So we... Now the atomic number is really important. It tells you, first of all, the number of protons. Now you will notice every element has a different atomic number because the most important thing is every element has a different number of protons. They're all different. Carbon has six. Now, we said a minute ago that every atom has an equal number of protons and electrons. Because we know we've got six protons, it also tells us the number of electrons. So we can see that carbon will have six protons and six electrons. So that is what the atomic number tells us. So the bottom number is done. And the top number is what we call the mass number. Now what this tells us is how heavy the atom is. And we looked earlier, the protons and neutrons are important. And actually what the mass number tells you is it tells you the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Now we know it has six protons. So therefore, to get the number of neutrons, we do the mass number, which is 12, take away the atomic number, which is six, which tells us we must have six neutrons. So again, we've got the mass number and the atomic number. This is what they mean, what we need to use them for. So that is new knowledge. Now we're going to practice it on the, on the last three, three lessons together and you're going to go away and do it yourselves. So let's do it together. So I'm going to quickly move on to my last piece of paper today. Okay, I'm going to do three with you and you're going to practice these 
for the rest of the lesson. So oxygen. So first thing is first, is find oxygen. Oxygen, you should find your periodic table, is number eight, and it has the mass number 16. So what we can do is, first of all, number, the number eight tells us it must have eight protons and eight electrons. That's the easy bit. Number of neutrons. We need to do the top number minus the bottom number. So we need to do 16 minus eight. So it must therefore have eight neutrons. So eight, eight, eight. They're not all that easy though. Let's do a hard one. So potassium. Now if you find potassium, its symbol is K. Its atomic number is 19. Its mass number is 39. So again, the 19 tells us two things, a number of protons. Notice I put P-E-N, makes it easier, okay, just to write it out. So pen, so protons is 19. Electrons must also be 19. And a number of neutrons, remember, to get that, we do the mass number, take away the atomic number. So 39, take away 19, gives you 20. Normally, they don't all they're not all the same. They're normally not all the same, but sometimes they are. And the final example I'm going to do with you is lithium. So lithium is number three, and its mass number is seven. So again, we can see the three tells you it's got three protons, three electrons, and four neutrons. Seven minus three gives you four. So there's some word examples for you. What I want us to do now is if you've got the slot printed off, you are good to go. If you haven't, what we need to do is have practice at these now. So here are nine more you can have a go at. So you can have a go at these, that'd be fantastic. So pause the video and do these. Once you've done that, I've also got some exam question practice to do. So you've got some, you can do these questions for me, these questions for me, and finally, these put this question for me. So the slot is those four slides. If you print it off, that's absolutely fine. Do it on the paper. If you haven't, just work on a piece of paper. And that is what you need to do today. So I will go through the answers next lesson with you. Okay, and next lesson we're going to take up a level. We're going to actually draw some atoms. And I love that lesson, it's so good. But until then, do some retrieval practice if you need to. The recall test will be set on Friday. I know it like, has, been, has been done recently. We did really well at that. You need to complete the slot and if you haven't done so already share it with you with other people make sure they are keeping up with the work okay and i'll see you then okay thank you for listening and all the best